Let the church say amen. Amen. The hour has come. Amen. We're thankful that the Lord has allowed us to assemble in the house of prayer one more time. We're thankful for everyone that's here. Amen. We are blessed. Amen. Just experience this moment right now. We are thankful. We are blessed. Amen. We still see, we still got our mind, and we still got the activity of all of our limbs. We are truly blessed. We want to thank God again for this opportunity just allowing us to come together. We are always so thankful for our pastor, amen, and great words, teaching, amen, is right there for us all the time. We thank God. That can't be nothing but happy. God. Amen. Amen. To have a shepherd. Amen. 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 So consistent and so powerful in the Word of God. Amen. Amen. So Amen. We are blessed today. Despite of what we may be going through, we are blessed. Amen. 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 We're not going for a long time. We're going to come with our potion again. I know that. Amen. We're just excited about the Word. We know that we, uh, we have a Word that's on the way. Amen. Amen. For our hearing. Amen. And also for our heart. Amen. 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 Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want.
chapter 1, 14 through 18. Reach out to those poor souls that need to hear the word. 
and touch those souls that hear the word and then receive the word in Jesus' name. Just bless, Lord. Bless all the deacons, Lord. Lord, we can ask you to bless all the members, Lord, those that are listening by way of television, whatever we pray, Lord. Those that are here, just bless, Lord. Just bless us all, Lord. We just thank you, Lord. And just have your way in this place. In Jesus' name. Amen. Blessed and the wonderful name of Jesus, Lord. Blessed. Oh, church, blessed and the wonderful name of Oh, that's the 
less than wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. And his name, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. Only name under heaven by which men might be saved, Jesus. The more I call him, the better I feel. Soothe my sorrows and calm my fears, Jesus. Can't nobody do me like him. Can't nobody hold me like him. Can't nobody rock me like him. Nobody but the Lord. God bless you this morning on this great day, another day that he has made, and we thank God for him, as we continue to pray for those who are sick and afflicted among us, amen, those who breathe, those who are facing challenges, that we know that all, we continue to recommend that name of Jesus, the Christ our Lord and Savior. From this morning, the book of 2 Timothy. First chapter, Seven Timothy, first chapter. Amen. We thank, again, thank God for the ministry of Pastor Greer. Bless us day by day. We thank God, Pastor Jenkins, Reverend Jenkins, here this morning. Many of you have expressed a desire, a need to be in this place. And if, if you're a member of New Salem and you have a burning need to be in worship, come on in and sit with us. Amen. Amen. We're not blocking, blocking anybody out. Amen. Amen. I, we don't know what you're going through. You know what you are. We don't know your condition. You know, you know it better than we do. And so if you have that burning desire to be in this place, come on. Put on a mask and sit with us. And yes. if we have to, we go in the parking lot and do what we need to do. That's right. Amen. Our God is able, yes, is. amen, to meet our needs. Amen. 7 Timothy chapter 1. I believe I want to start with verse 3. 7 Timothy 1, starting with 3. Apostle Paul says this to his son in the ministry. He said, I thank God whom I serve. For my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayer day and night, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, and that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, I am persuaded that in thee also. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance to, that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Be thou therefore, be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of the Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou a partaker of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. That's God's word for God's people. And I want to deal with thought this morning, a stirred up saint. A stirred up, a stirred up saint. Not, not a stirred up devil. A stirred up saint. Yeah. Too many times the devil stirred up and we sit down, but I want to deal with the stirred up saint. Uh, in this life, something always has us stirred up. Amen. Uh, whether it's a mass killing or whether it's a single killing on the street. Uh, when we have old men raping young women and young women, young men raping old women. Amen. We get stirred up most recently. Politics have stirred us up. The Black Life Movement has us stirred up. The, this pandemic has us stirred up. Uh, but we get stirred up, but we don't stay stirred long enough. That's our problem. Uh, 
We're stirring long enough to get something started. But we don't stay long enough to finish it. But the Lord said we ought to count the cost because sometimes you do more damage starting and not finishing than you do not starting at all. And it looks like as soon as the crisis comes back down, those of us who were stirred up go right back to our comfort zone. There was some black folk who voted for President Obama that have never voted again. Amen. Now, thanks to Donald Trump, you're stirred back up. Are you all here with me? After Hurricane Katrina, folk moved right back into New Orleans in the same lowlands. Amen. They got flooded out before. Why? Because they were, the stirred up had begun to settle. Uh, that was a time when gas was almost $4 a gallon and we were stirred up. We would get somewhere and sit down. But now when this gas hit 98 cents a gallon, folks start joyriding and haven't stopped since. Because we failed to stay stirred up. And because we failed to stay stirred, many things in our community go undone. Amen. I'm uh, listening on the radio, Melvin Charles Smith from Worthy Mount Rai East was saying that he marched with Martin Luther King in 1968. Amen. Because then black lives matter. And he said it's sad to say that here in 2020, we're still marching for not something new, but for the same thing. Because we're saying we're marching in the same old marches, in the same old place, saying the same old thing. Why? Because we didn't stay stirred up. Once things calmed down, we went right back to our old place. Amen. And the same thing happened. We're no different than the man by the pool of Bethesda. That after the troubling of the water, when the water comes, he slides right back to his pad. We're no different than the man who laid by the gate called Beautiful. As soon as collection time is over, we lay right back down on the same old step. Amen. Why? Because we failed to remain stirred up long enough to get the job done. But Jesus said, not only are we called to begin the work, he said the work must be finished. And so he said, I must work the work of him while it's day, for the night come with no man can work. He said, I am called to finish this work. The same Paul talks about not just starting work, but he talks about finishing the work when he said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I kept my faith. The work just should not be started, but it must be finished. Because when you start something and don't finish, you leave a whole lot of hope hanging. Amen. And right now we live in a world where a lot of folk are hanging because we started the work and we were not able to finish the work. I'm almost through. In, 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 in this life, things need to be stirred because just like physical things need to be stirred, spiritual things must be stirred also. And, 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 and just like the angel performed his healing, at the stirring of the water in Bethesda, we find that God works his miracle when he gets a few saints stirred up. Why? Because the Bible says one stirred up saint can put 2,000 devils in flight. Amen. When you get two stirred up saints, he said you can put 10,000 in flight. And Jesus said not only that, but when two or three gather together in my name to get stirred up calling me, he said I'll get stirred up and you'll find me right there with them in the midst. Am I here by myself? Sometime when parents were trying to move children to do certain things, they called the child and the child wouldn't respond. And after a while, they would go get the child and shake them. They didn't want to kill them. It didn't matter when a parent shake the child, that means I'm mad at the kid. Amen, somebody. But I'm going to restrain my wrath and I'm just going to shake you. What does a shaking do? A shaking gets the child, is, is the mama and daddy way of getting the child stirred up. And when the child is stirred up, then they begin to act like they respect mama and daddy. They begin to move at their command. Are, are you all, are you all hear me? And sometimes God has to stir us up. He has to shake us real good to get us stirred up to lean, call, and depend on him. And I am persuaded, amen, that this pandemic is in place to get us stirred up because we have become too complacent. 
we become too lackadaisical. We got we become so comfortable that we were calling God in our prayers to do things that He told us to do in His commandments. Are uh, uh, y'all hear me? Uh, we we and, and, and so we needed we needed a little bit of shaking. We needed a little bit of stirring because God was not getting out of us what He needed. Amen. To to get His glory. Watch this when you stir in something. That means you want some stuff to come together. <laughs> Amen. When you put it all in, in the bowl by itself, everything is sitting by itself. But when you stir it, that means you bring stuff together. And, 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 and in chemistry, when you bring certain elements together, you start a reaction. Amen. That yield the results that you want. And God said, I, I, I need to stir my folk up sometime because independent they are inert. Amen, which means they don't work. He said, when I stir them up, they become active, which means they begin to react to what's going on in the bowl, and they begin to produce what I want them to produce. He said, I, he said, he's, it's time out for one sitting over here praying, and one sitting over here singing, and one sitting in the back morning. He said, if I can bring them together, amen, and stir the prayer up with the, with the hymn, and stir the hymn up with the moan, and stir the moan up with the hum, amen, and something will begin to happen down on the inside, that was not going on. I need to stir them up. Stirring become necessary to make sure that the soup is the same at the bottom as the little top. Y'all missed that, didn't you? When I was a child, when I was a child, mama used to love, we were poor. We were not poor, we were poor. We couldn't afford that second on at all. We just P.O. Amen. And mama would cook a big old, big old pot. Of, they don't make pots like they used to make them. They don't make pot like you make them. Pot used to be real big. And, 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 and mama would cook that soup. And that soup would have plenty of vegetables and meat in it. Amen, somebody. But the pot was so deep that the vegetable would be at the bottom. And I was always a thief. I was going to eat before they ate, and then he put it in. And so to be quick, I didn't have time to reach deep. <laughs> I went hit the top of the pot and I come out of there with what I thought was some soup. Yeah. And I'm souping and souping and souping and wasn't chewing, just swallowing. But <laughs> wasn't nothing to eat. And I noticed somebody going in to get a bowl like they were supposed, they would order, but they were in no hurry. And they come out of there and I'm watching they bowl, they didn't green beans and corn and tomatoes and potatoes and all that stuff. Need to have some okra and a chunk of meat every once in a while. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. And I'm sitting there in my little bowl and I'm studying some church is called a sugging. Amen. <laughs> that means you're, <laughs> mean you're sucking the soup out the spoon because there's no food. And, 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 and I go back and steal a little more and I come back with just the, 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 the soup portion and somebody's going to another bowl and they come back brother Chris and they have, they don't want to need a fork to eat eat what they were eating and I'm wondering what was wrong and I asked my mama one day I said mama whenever I go to the pot amen I, and, and I know that for one pot because I looked through the whole kitchen amen somebody but, and, and, and when I get my bowl when I'm eating my bowl all I got is liquid and so and so with their boat, and they got all that stuff. I said, Mama, what's wrong? What am I doing wrong? She said, Well, son, let me explain something to you. When you got a pot full of soup, she said, the vegetables have a tendency to soak, go to the bottom because they weigh more and liquid on the top. And so she said, when you want to get an even bowl of soup, you got to stir it. Are you, are you here with me? She said, if, if you want to get the soup like it's supposed to be, you got to stir it up. And when you stir up the soup, no matter what you reach in the pot, you come out with everything you need. Amen. And, and, and I find out in this life sometimes when we spiritually lacking because we fail to stir up our gift. We keep on praying one-sided prayers. We keep on performing one-sided tasks. Amen. But 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 we serve a manifold God. I, I need some help in here. See, see, some of y'all just ask for some joy. Some of y'all just ask for some peace. 
some of y'all just ask for the hope, but we serve a God who's able to serve it all in one act. I need some help in here. The God I serve is able to give me everything because I heard Paul say, and my God shall supply all yeah. of oh, my needs. I don't have to, have to have to ask God for a bean or a carrot or potato. I ask God for the whole bowl. Yeah. Amen. This bowl I find. Everything I need, and so sometime in order for God to get out of us everything He needs, He has to get us stirred up. Uh, Y'all, we won't help but one person until He stirs up. We won't say but one prayer until He stirs up. We won't do but one good deed a day until He stirs us up. Are y'all here with me? And so sometime the Lord has. To stir up saints to get what he wants. Back in the days of the early church, Jesus told the apostles to go and wait on me in Jerusalem. And he said, You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost come on you. And then I want you to bear with me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, in the uttermost parts of the world. Well, they went to Jerusalem. And the Bible said at Pentecost, the Holy Ghost came down just like the Lord had promised. And they began to speak in diverse tongues and languages. Which means when the Holy Ghost came, it gave them understanding and knowledge in order to be able to reach any man anywhere. Y'all missed that. See, all the tongues, they weren't talking, babbling like people think. For he said they were speaking tongues, they were speaking languages that people from all over the world would understand because at that time in Jerusalem, there were folk from all over the world. And when the Holy Ghost came, he wanted to speak to everybody at the same time in their own language. Are, are, are y'all here with me? And so he gave a manifold tongue. Well, they began to speak to all men, which means if you honor my command, when the Holy Ghost come on you, you're going to leave where you are. And you're going to go where I send you. And when you go where I send you, they'll understand you when you get there. Because I gave you the tongue to speak. In other words, I didn't give everybody the same tongue. I gave you the tongue, this operation of not where you are, but where you're supposed to go. Ooh, let me slow down. Because somebody missed that. See, some of us are stuck. And won't don't understand why our ministers are not effective. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the people you're talking to and what you were talking about is not designed for the folk you started with. Yeah. It's designed for the folk who end up with. See, the folk, don't be upset when the folk you start with fall off. Because that was your beginning that was not your destiny. See, you'll never get to be a senior hanging with juniors. Are y'all are, are, are hear me? And we're too concerned about making the folk happy where we are. No, he said, I want you to go. And I'm giving you what you need and the language you need when you get to where I send you, it'll make sense. Yeah. 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 Well, most of us are stuck in battle trying to defend ourselves with tools that are designed for the finish and we still in the start. Yeah. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah. And so he said, when you receive my gift, yeah. When you receive the blessing, I need you to go where I send you. And proof that you can be successful is that they understand you where they are. Yeah. Are y'all here with me? Yeah. But what happened? They got comfortable. Mm -hmm. And they got complacent. Mm -hmm. Peter and James and all the church elders they were hung up on Jerusalem, the Jerusalem church, the mother church. They had more confidence in the Jerusalem church 
than they did in Jerusalem Christ. Yeah. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah. And they were so comfortable with the folk they knew. They were so comfortable with the church they knew that they wouldn't go out. And because they wouldn't go out, the Lord's command could not be honored. So the Lord allowed persecution to come upon the Jerusalem church. In other words, he made them scatter. And when they scattered, Peter got where he was supposed to be. Jane got what he was supposed to be. Jude got what he was supposed to be. And the word of God began to manifest itself all over the world. When he had told them, I want you to go and bear witness of me in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, and the utmost parts of the world. In other words, when you receive my gift, it's not to be you where you want it. It's not to be used like you want it. It's not to be used when you want it. But you got to go where I send thee and do what I told you to do. Is that right? Because I've equipped you for people. I've equipped you for purpose. And I've equipped you for place. And until you give what I send you, what I gave you will not work. And that's why so many folk have begun to lose their faith and turn back on God. They begin to believe that what he gave them will not work. Well, it's not the power. It's the place. Ain't God all right? It's not the purpose. It is your position. If you would change your position to meet God's purpose, if you would change your place to match God's power, you will find out that our God is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all. You ask God things, you will find in your place that no weapon falls against you. If they were to hurt you, you will find out in God's time that what the devil meant for your bad, God means for your good. Ain't God all right? And so now, this Apostle Paul is caught up in jail. His mind uh, can't move, uh, but his spirit uh, can't be stopped. Uh, and so while uh, he sits there, uh, rather than crying uh, on the paper, uh, Paul takes out his pen uh, and say, yet uh, while I'm in prison, uh, I still got work to do. Uh, Paul has a son, and his name is Timothy, and he's been training him to take his place. If you a child in God's army, you ought to be training somebody to take your place. You ought to be training somebody to walk where you stand. You ought to be training somebody to run where you walk. Ain't God all right? So Paul sees himself, and he begins to realize that while I'm in bad and change, uh, if I don't work it right, uh, somebody uh, is going to be confused. Uh, somebody uh, is not going to understand. Uh, and so he writes uh, to a young son uh, and said, Timothy, uh, don't be shaken. Uh, don't you be scared uh, by how you see me. Uh, because I'm here. Uh, because now uh, I'm in transition. Uh, and my God uh, is getting me ready. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, you don't have to worry uh, about me no more. Uh, because I've been uh, to the mountaintop. Uh, I looked over uh, and seen the promised land. Uh, I've been uh, to Galatia. Uh, I've been uh, down in Rome. Uh, I've been to Philippi. Uh, I've been to Dr. I've been to live to see her. Ain't God all right? Everywhere he sent me, that's where I'm going. And I've seen God do wonderful things in my life. I prayed when I was down. And he told me that his grace 
2000 was sufficient. Uh, and I know uh, if the grace was sufficient, uh, the grace is still sufficient. Hey, God, all right. Uh, but I know you got young ass, uh, and you don't understand uh, why I am uh, where I am. Uh, but I want you to know uh, I'm on my way uh, up the King Highway. Uh, you don't have to worry uh, about my condition uh, because it way uh, with my soul. Uh, and God, all right. Uh, and so now, tell me, uh, I'm getting ready uh, to pass my map. Uh, I'm getting ready uh, to step out uh, for you to step in. Uh, and God, all right. Uh, but I want you to pass uh, to run this race uh, that I've been running uh, for my long time. Uh, I want you to get ready to tell me. Uh, and be prepared uh, for what's coming against you. Uh, and now, uh, so don't be offended uh, by my present condition. Uh, don't be offended uh, about what the natural I see. Uh, don't be offended uh, with me and loud uh, and scandalize your name. Uh, don't be offended uh, when they take your body uh, and cast it in prison. Uh, and God, all right. Uh, I want you to remember uh, that in times like these, uh, I laid my hands on you. Uh, and what you got then, uh, you still got it right now. Uh, don't you get upset uh, and thank God that left you. Uh, don't get upset uh, and think you're by yourself. Uh, you will never alone uh, when God is on your side. Uh, all uh, you got to do uh, in times like these uh, is reach on the inside. Uh, Uh, I just believe uh, 
that the Lord told her uh, I'm tired uh, of Baptist hanging with Baptist uh, and Baptist hanging with Baptist uh, but now is the time uh, to tear down the middle wall uh, and come together uh, heart to heart uh, and press the red uh, thank God alright uh, I need the Pentecost uh, to come to the Baptist uh, I need the Baptist uh, to come to the Methodist uh, to go in love. Thank God, all right. We're calling all the God children. Get together now. Oh, what a time. What a time. What a time. Thank God, all right. I don't know your story. And I don't know your glory now. But when God come in, he will take this shriveler out of his head. I want the pastor to love the I want the deacon to love the trustee. I want the trustee to love my ushers. I want my ushers to love my choir. I want my choir to love my missionary. Thank God, all right. We got to learn how to come together. How good and better it is when brothers join together. Thank God, all right. And when you reach down uh, and come together, uh, the Lord will show up. Uh, thank God, all right. Uh, the Hebrew boy uh, was down in Babylon. Uh, they came together, uh, and the Lord showed up. Uh, Paul and Silas, uh, they were down in jail. Uh, they came together, uh, and the Lord showed up. Uh, I don't know uh, what you going through. Uh, if you will come together, uh, the Lord show up, uh, thank God, all right. Uh, I'm long in the morning, but I want you to know uh, if I don't wake up uh, in the morning, uh, everything uh, is going to be all right. Uh, thank God, all right. Uh, is the Lord all right? Uh, the Lord wants you uh, to be stirred up. Uh, stir will make you move. Uh, stir will make you mix up. Uh, and stir will make you magnify. Soup, uh, when the soup was cooking, uh, that was the top of the pot. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, but when Mama got ready uh, to stir her soup, uh, she removed the lid uh, and began to stir. Uh, when she began to stir, uh, the steam began to rise. When the steam rose, uh, it told everybody uh, that was soup in the house. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, and I don't know uh, how you. But every time I think uh, about the good of the Lord uh, and all uh, he's done for me, uh, my soul uh, cries out, uh, hallelujah, thank God, all right, uh, I need somebody to help me lift Jesus, I need somebody to pray his name, uh, if God be good to you, you ought to say yes, that the Lord brought you, uh, did he meet you to me? Oh, yes. 
still story happened a long time ago. It was 1969 in a little shotgun church called New Galilee on Rochester Road. And you walk a home to Memphis, of Memphis, Tennessee. I heard Say, boy, the Lord had needed you. My feet got light. My soul got happy. And it felt all right. I went to run to Jesus. And that same night, he put some on the inside. And it never came clear. I've had some good days. I've had some bad days. Some of I've had some need of good times. But what he gave me, the devil can't take. Jesus. 